All right. Um, welcome, everyone. Thanks so much for being here for our first official kitchen intuition uh, cooking workshop. Um, this is a model that we've we've been doing with our farm to family program for several months, so we're really excited to offer it um, to our, our home uh, Franklin County community. Um, th these workshops are meant to be for anyone who uh, loves food, um, likes to cook, or maybe wants uh, more experience cooking. Um, we may be at all different levels, ranges of experience cooking. Um, I myself am not an expert chef or, or professional chef. Um, and so uh, we really hope that these classes will be a space where we all can learn together and experiment together. Uh, experimentation being the key here. <laughs> Um, so with that, please feel free to unmute yourself at any time, ask questions, share uh, anecdotes about other times you've, you've tried cooking something like this, um, whatever. Um, great, so uh, I'm gonna start us off by just highlighting the ingredients and the tools that we're using today. This was all listed in the email, but just in case. Um, so our star of the the soup, at least for today, is our <laughs> butternut squash. Um, sadly, these are not from Just Roots. We had a hard year for, for squash at our farm, but they are local. And then we've got um, some curry powder, some coconut milk, an onion, and two cloves of, <laughs> two cloves of garlic. And, uh, and some vegetable broth. And then for the flatbreads, um, some flour, all-purpose flour, baking powder, salt, and let's see, some olive oil and a little bit of water. Um, and then the, the tools that you'll need on hand, um, a couple mixing bowls, a knife and cutting board for chopping, veggie peeler for the squash. Um, and then what's really helpful, if you have an immersion blender like this, um, this makes it really easy to puree the soup. Um, or if you have a stand mixer, you can also use that and just um, take you know a couple cups at a time and blend it in a blender. Um, you don't have to puree it if you'd rather keep the soup as is. Um, that's also totally fine. So yeah, so without further ado, I think we can go ahead and get started. Um, and I'm gonna turn my camera so you can see the cutting board, but it may <laughs> chop off my head a little bit. So, um, all right, let me know if you can't see anything. All right, so we start with our butternut squash. Um, you all may have varying sizes of squash. Um, if you have a really large one, like it's like twice this size, <laughs> um, you're welcome to just cook with half of it. Um, if you have a small one, um, you could have more squash, you can throw more squash in or add in uh, some sweet potatoes or something. But um, so we're gonna start with peeling our squash. The thing that I love about butternut squash is that um, as far as winter squashes go, it's a pretty mild flavor. Um, and so you can add it to a lot of different recipes. And sometimes, uh, depending on the recipe, you won't even taste it. So it's, it's a good one to uh, put in, like if you have kids that are really picky eaters, um, you can sneak some, some squash into their meal. Um, Lynette can attest to, <laughs> to that working. My daughter is such a picky eater and I tried this yesterday and she loved it. I was, it makes my job easier too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have some friends that, that love to make uh, butternut squash, mac and cheese. 
Do any of you all have favorite butternut recipes? I just like to cook it and put brown sugar and mm. on it. Yeah. I this is technically I use delicata most of the time, but butternut I bet would work great too. Um, I like to just dice it and roast it with like rosemary and sage and salt and pepper and then mix it. I'm a vegetarian, so I use like vegetarian sausage, but um, like some kind of a spicy Italian sausage and like but olive oil is really good together. That sounds really hey. delicious. You go. So I'm now that I've peeled all the skin off, I'm just cutting off both ends. Well, thank you. And cutting off the bottom helps to stabilize it so it's easier to cut in half, I found. Um, cutting winter squash can be really difficult sometimes. Butternut squash, thankfully, is not the toughest, um, but I, um, it does help to have a sharp knife. Um, just like any cooking, um, a dull knife can actually be a lot uh, more dangerous or more of a hindrance um, than anything. I split it down the middle, open it up and see all those seeds inside. And we might not have time for this today, but you're welcome to um, scoop out the seeds and put them, reserve them, uh, the side and then you can roast them up like you would with pumpkin seeds if you've done that before. Um, you can just coat them with some olive oil, some salt and pepper, and then any other spices that you like and then roast them um, in the oven and you could throw them on top of the soup to get take a little bit of texture or put them on top of a salad or just snack on them. All right, I almost got all these seeds out. This is a particularly seedy one. Okay, and now um, I'm going to um, chop up our squash into about half an inch to one inch size cubes. Um, so I'm gonna start with just one half at a time, turn it over so that um, like a rounded edge facing up. And um, I'm gonna just cut uh, lengthwise long uh, strips. About, again, half an inch to an inch wide. Just be careful of your fingers. Okay. And then you can take your pieces and flip them to the side and cut them again lengthwise in half. Rotate them again and cut them into cubes. And typically the, the smaller you, you can cut them, um, the faster it'll cook, uh, but they don't all need to be uh, perfectly uniform. The great thing about this soup is that we're just going to puree it anyways. So um, it's okay if this isn't the prettiest chopping job. I'm still peeling. <laughs> no I'm trying to get the seeds out. 
no problem. Take your time. And, and by all means, um, feel free to, to stop me if I'm going too fast. Sounds like somebody's using a meat cleaver. <laughs> oh, it's just my pure. <laughs> Watch those fingers. <laughs> uh, how wide did you say those strips should be? Yeah, I, I'm eyeballing it, but roughly half an inch to an inch. Again, that the smaller you can comfortably cut them, the faster they cook. I can really sweep my floor after this. <laughs> you can see here, this is about the size that I'm aiming for. Okay. Yeah. Pressure cooker helps too. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> if I hadn't gone out today, I'd have had this peeled already. <laughs> Um, so, uh, butternut squash, in terms of nutrition, is packed with lots of vitamin C and vitamin A. Um, and one way that you can tell is because of its bright uh, orange color. Um, so, a lot of veggies that are orange. Um, have a lot of vitamin A, which is really good for eyes. Keeps your eyes healthy. This squash is particularly tough. <laughs> While we're chopping, um, does anyone want to share more favorite squash recipes if you have them? Or maybe something you've seen with squash that you're curious to, to try making? I've recently been making, I've discovered Japanese curries, which are kind of like mild, um, it's like a mild, uh, it's not even a paste. It's more like a cube, almost like a bouillon cube kind of thing, but it's, um, but yeah, they're just like mild curries and they're really good with shiitakes and butternut. So that's been something I've returned to a few times this, this winter. Um, Bon Appetit has a really delicious, simple recipe. That's like butternut squash, Japanese curry, which should be, if anybody's looking for something new. Yeah. Ooh, and I think Janet's Janet said squash ravioli. Yum. Um. All right. So I finally got through all the squash. Um, no good. <laughs> <laughs> um, again, uh, you know, go at your own speed. Don't feel like you have to rush to keep up. Um, you'll get a, a copy of this recording too. Um, so I'm gonna just dump this into a bowl to clear my workspace. So we can move on to the next thing, which is our onion. I'm just gonna dice up one onion. Okay. So I'm gonna start by cutting off the ends, either end of the onion. And then take the paper off. Um, you can also, if it doesn't peel off easily, a helpful trick is just to gently score the, the skin of the onion. How many cups of squash should we have about here? Um, the recipe calls for six cups, um, uh, or essentially, uh, like medium sized, uh, squash. 
So we, we, we gave you all uh, a squash that's perfect for this recipe, the right size. All right. Um, so now I'm gonna cut my onion in half uh, in, down the middle. Um, so that side here. And um, a helpful trick, um, some of you might, might already be familiar with this if you cooked a lot or worked in kitchens, um, but it helps when you're chopping onions um, not uh, dice, not cut all the way through, cut almost all the way through. And that way, when you turn the onion again to do the same thing on the other side, um, it's all staying together and it's not splaying out and making it hard to chop. So I cut it lengthwise and I'm gonna turn it over and do the same thing on the other side. Just like with the squash, um, uh, these don't need to be uniform cuts because it's just gonna get pureed anyways. And I'm just chopping up any remaining big chunks. And now we'll do that with the other side. We've also gotten the question in the past um, in, in other cooking classes about how to prevent crying <laughs> when cutting onions. And I don't know, maybe some of you have um, uh, recommendations personally. I found the only thing that works is when I wear my contacts. <laughs> yeah, I've got a pair of goggles I keep by the onions. Nice, do they work? Yeah. Somewhat. The the swim goggles work better than the ski goggles. They're the ones with a really good fit. <laughs> Emma I was literally just gonna ask, what style? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember trying them as a kid and it not working so well, but I, I have heard people have uh, a lot of luck with goggles. <laughs> um so now um I'm moving on to the garlic. Uh, just need two cloves. So I peeled them and I cut off the ends. And now I'm gonna um, cut them up into fine pieces. Try and get them as really put them all in the same bowl, right? Yes, all of everything that we've chopped so far um, is all gonna go into the pot together as our first ingredients for the soup. Um, another handy knife trick is um, to use your the leverage of your knife and keep the tip um, on the board. And so if you're like cutting something fine like garlic, keep the tip on the cutting board, but just move the handle, like swinging it left to right or right to left. And then you can scrape it back into the little pile again. Easier to cut it faster. So if you can see that, that's about the size I'm trying to get it. All right. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my stove. Get this pot heating up. You want to use a, a large. Uh, pot. It doesn't have to be uh, like heavy bottom like this. You, whatever large pot you have on hand is fine. And I'm going to add a, a splash of olive oil. And when I say splash, uh, I'd say about a tablespoon. I tend to, when I'm just adding oil to a pot or a pan as a base, I tend to just eyeball it though. And you're welcome to do the same, or if you'd rather measure it, that's totally fine too. 
So I'm just gonna let that coat the bottom while this heats up. Yeah. My exercise today. <laughs> oh, come on. How are you doing with, with cutting up the squash? Almost <laughs> done. Almost there. All right. This, I'd say this pot is almost there. I'm going to start by throwing my onions in. Then I'm going to add the garlic as well. Mix that. And I'm going to stir them all together. They all get coated in the olive oil. Okay. And I'm just going to let those do their thing and cook them for about two minutes. And while we're doing that, I'll just um, clear off this workstation a little bit. Any questions so far? Oh yeah, it's starting to smell like onions in here. It's delicious. And a little stir so they don't start to get too toasty. You want to cook them until they, they start to get a little translucent. Wow. Are the onions and garlic first? Yep, you'll throw the onions and the garlic into the pot first. Give them a, a two minute head start. Okay. Well. Okay. And then, um, once you feel like your your onions are looking good, they're translucent um, and very fragrant, you can add the squash into the pot too. All your cubed squash. Right. And again, give that a nice stir so everyone's mixed in together. And so that the squash also gets some of that remaining oil. I'm going to season it with a little salt and pepper. Uh, for the salt and pepper, you can just add uh, a pinch or really, you know, as much as um, you prefer. You can always uh, add more later. So start with a, a smaller amount first. Well, that doesn't work. <laughs> So Jenna said that he baked it. 
instead of. Oh yeah, you uh, you bake the the butternut. Yeah, you can also do that if you if you've already roasted the squash. Um, you can um, basically just cook up the onions and garlic like like we were doing here, and then add in your your baked squash. Um, add in the other ingredients we're gonna add, like the coconut milk and, and spices, things like that, and then puree it. And that's, uh, you're, you're essentially like a, a little bit further ahead if your squash is baked. You just wanna get your squash soft so that it's easy to blend it all together. And then um, the spice that we're going to add that's really going to give it its, its key flavor is some curry powder. So we want one and a half tablespoons of curry powder. Um, and if you, if you haven't cooked with curry powder before, it's, it's essentially a mixture of, of different spices, uh, depending on where you've gotten it from, but primarily has um, turmeric, which is what gives it its, its, um, its beautiful orange yellow color, um, and ginger, and some uh, black pepper, and uh, cumin as well. And other, other curry powders might have some other spices mixed in there as well. Um, but turmeric, uh, which is the star ingredient <laughs> of, of the curry powder, um, it has lots of health benefits. Um, we're using actually the, the root of the turmeric plant and, um, turmeric has lots of anti-inflammatory properties as well as, let me turn the camera so <laughs> you can see my face. Um, it also is good at helping to regulate, uh, blood sugar levels, um, and has some antiviral properties to help fight off um, cold, like viruses, colds, flus, things like that. Um, and I personally like to eat curries in the winter time to help um, kind of wake my body up and also help drain sinuses uh, when I've had colds and things like that. It's not, it's not really spicy as in hot, it's just spicy as flavorful and it helps to waken up your, your senses. So I'm gonna add this to the squash. And once you start stirring it in, everything is gonna turn yellow. Um, I should warn you, if, if you're using uh, wooden utensils, um, the turmeric will uh, temporarily stain your utensils yellow, uh, but it does come out in time. You can also, uh, turmeric has been used as a natural dye for thousands of years. Um, so you could, you can experiment with dyeing clothes or the fabric with turmeric and it makes this beautiful yellow color. All right. Oh, I yes. Good already. <laughs> is the curry powder that came in these little baggies already measured? Yes, sorry, I forgot to mention that. Yes, it's already measured, so you can just Thank dump you. the whole bag in there. Um, and just double checking the recipe here. Okay, so I'm gonna let this. And we can get our next ingredients ready. We've got um, some coconut milk and vegetable broth. So you're gonna need the entire can of the coconut milk. Okay. I'm a little behind here. You're not alone. <laughs> Am I going too fast? One two, right. onions, one, two onions and garlic are really flavorful. Do we throw the squash in? Yes, you can throw the squash in. 
And then add uh, a little bit of salt and pepper and the curry powder. You can just throw the whole bag of the curry powder in. The whole bag of the curry powder. Yeah. Where did I put it? There it is. <laughs> and I'm just gonna, um, I like to get as much of the coconut milk as I can. So I'm gonna rinse it out a little bit and then swirl it into the, the can. Not a full cup or not a full can, I should say, of water, but just enough to get the remaining uh, coconut. All right, and next we'll add some vegetable broth. You need two cups of the broth, which is uh, half of the, the box here, half of the package. How long do we cook the squash before we add that in? Um, if you've added the, the squash and the spices, you can just let it, let it cook for about um, two to four minutes. Okay. We got two cups of vegetable broth here. Just pour that in. So the whole can of coconut milk and the whole can of coconut milk, yep. And then two cups of the vegetable broth, which is half of the package. Okay. okay. Oh, and it looks like, yeah, thank you, Lynette. Lynette's adding all the measurements in the chat. And once you've added those liquids, you can stir them in. Get everyone together. If we put the um, squash in that big pan, what are you putting the onion and stuff in to start with? Using the other pan? So I'm sorry, I wasn't watching. I've been cutting. <laughs> no worries. So you want to put your uh, everything into one large pot. So if you put your, your onions and your garlic into your soup pot, then you can add your butternut squash on top of that. Um, everything's just going into one pot right now. Okay. Oops. All right. So now that I've added the coconut milk and the veggie broth, um, I'm gonna um, put it on this so it will be a little faster. And I want to get it to. Uh, a low boil, not like a raging boil, <laughs> uh, just a low boil. Um, so while that's happening, we can um, pivot to uh, starting our flatbreads, which we'll serve with our, our soup. Um, so uh, I know we, we don't have too much time left together, but I want to make sure that um, you leave knowing how to make um, a few of the flatbreads. Um, so we may not have time for everyone to finish all of their flatbreads, but you'll at least be knowing how to make, uh, having made your first uh, couple of them, and then you can uh, keep working on them after the class. Or you could also save the dough and um, finish them another time, up to you. So I'm gonna clear off my workstation. My cutting board has turned orange from all the squash. <laughs> All right, so for the flatbreads, 
Um, uh, I'm actually just gonna do half of the recipe because I'm I'm just cooking for two people tonight. Um, but if you're if you want to do the full recipe, um, the full amount that was on the the recipe we gave out, you need three cups of all-purpose flour. And that's that's why she's going to have to cook. <laughs> Yeah, if you have a if you have a lid for your pot, that will help to um, heat everything up faster. I've got it on medium, so awesome. Um, yeah, so three cups of flour, and then you can add two teaspoons of baking powder to that. Three cups of flour. Three cups of flour, two teaspoons of baking powder. And then one and a half teaspoon of salt. Yeah. Oh, and yeah, and that teaspoon, not not tablespoons. <laughs> um, all right. So I'm just going to mix all these dry ingredients together, and then you can create a little well in the middle. Wait. Question. Yeah. Is it um? Two tablespoons of baking powder or two teaspoons of baking powder? Teaspoons. Thank you. And, and teaspoon, uh, one and a half teaspoons of salt, too. Um, and then in that little well, you can add uh, three tablespoons of olive oil. Come oh on. And then um, a cup of ice water, uh, out the ice cubes. <laughs> so you can take um, some ice cubes out, add some water to it. Um, and when it seems super cold enough, then you can add a cup of that. Again, I'm, I'm cutting this recipe in half for myself, so I'm just gonna do half a cup. Um, did you add the olive oil to the well already before the water? Yes, yep, you could add, add the olive oil and the, the water into the little well. And then from there, um, just start to mix it all together. Two teaspoons of baking powder. Yes. Yep. And it's up to you, whatever your preference is. I like to start with a mixing spoon and then uh, use my hands to mix it the rest of the way. Um, partially because I like to just play with my food. <laughs> but also, then you get a better idea of if it's the right texture or the right stickiness. We don't want this, this recipe or this uh, dough to be really sticky. Um, we want it to be wet that everything's fully blended, but not so sticky that you can't get it off of your fingers. And actually, now that I say that, I think I'm, I might need to add just a little bit more flour. As you can tell, it's super sticky right now. So you can just add a little, if that's happening to you too, you can just add a little bit of extra flour at a time, mix it in. A little well.
This is getting better. Good bold. Little sticky it might add just a little bit more flour. Right, super sticky, um, but I can easily uh, keep working with it. So this is just a really simple flatbread, um, similar to um, various flatbreads from around the world, like uh, roti, common in, in Indian and South Asian foods. Um, it's pretty similar to um, pita. Um, just a, yeah, really simple, easy flatbread. Um, all right, I'm gonna just quickly wash my hands. How much ice water? One cup. One cup, okay. That I can do. All right. Now that my dough is all mixed, I'm gonna um, let it just sit for a few minutes. The recipe says to let it sit for 10 minutes. Um, I, when I've experimented with this, I've, I rested it for longer and also not at all. And personally, I didn't find much of a difference. Um, but just for the sake of our time together, I'm just I'm gonna rest it for just a couple minutes while I check on the soup. Okay. So I don't think you can see from where my camera is, but my soup is bubbling a bit. And I'm just gonna check um, the squash and make sure that it's fork tender, meaning that I can get a fork um, through a cube really easily. That's like super soft. Not even close yet. <laughs> <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> So if the dough is too dry, you add a little bit more water? If it's, yeah, if the dough is too dry, you can add a little bit more water. Just add a little bit at a time. You'd be surprised how just the tiniest amount of water can, can make a difference. Okay. <laughs> this is just about ready. I'm gonna, uh, my squash is, is pretty soft. Um, I'm gonna actually take it off of the heat and I'm gonna move it to a farther back so that I can use this burner for the, the flatbread so you can see. Just switch places here. So for the flatbreads, we're gonna cook them on a skillet. Uh, whatever large or medium to large size skillet you have is, is fine. Um, if you have something like a cast iron skillet, that's great because um, it, it helps if it's um, some heft to it. But really whatever you have at home is fine. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and, because cast iron takes a little bit longer to heat up, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the stove back on to the skillet at about medium, medium high heat. Let it, let it heat up and do its thing. And then um, got my dough here. I wanna separate it into uh, equal sized balls, about the size of an egg or a golf ball. Thank you. 
So if you're doing the full recipe, um, that will make about 10 to 12 of these. You can divide it into either 10 or 12. Um, again, I'm just doing half of it. So I'll make a smaller amount. Ooh, this is still very sticky. Interesting. And if you find that it's still too sticky, just add a little more flour. Okay. So I've got, you can see, uh, a ball of dough about this size, about the size of an egg. And I'm just gonna roll it, try to get it into a ball in my hands. And then uh, if you have a, a small bowl off to the side with some extra flour like this, um, you can drop your, your dough ball into that, roll it around in the flour so it's covered in the flour. And then this is where it's up to you. You can either flatten it out with just your hands and like pinch it into a nice flat, uh, like super thin pancake. Um, or you can kind of go back and forth with your hands similar to uh, making a tortilla. Or if you've got a rolling pin, also roll these out. You wanna try to get them really thin though. Whoop, I'm gonna... This is definitely extra sticky for me today. Okay, you go there. So we want to we want to try to roll the dough out. So it's about each flatbread is about a quarter inch thick, give or take. Okay, so about. You can see about that thickness. Okay, so now I'm gonna add um, about a tablespoon of olive oil to my pan here. Um, or if you use, you can use vegetable oil too. I, I found that you don't, you really don't need much oil at all. In fact, uh, less is more in this case. Just like that. Um, coat the pan. And then when your, your flatbread is rolled out, seems thin enough. You can roll it into your pan. It might start to sizzle a little bit. And you might notice it if it's really thin, it might start to bubble too, which is which is great. You want that. Um, it's okay if it doesn't. And you want to just let it cook on each side for about I'd say a, a, about 30 seconds to a minute, depending on how hot your pan is. The goal is, is to get each side a nice uh, golden brown. How thin for these? About a, a quarter of an inch. All right, and I'm gonna try flipping this over now. Nice, perfect. And while this one is cooking, you can start working on the next one.
And you can just keep flipping it back and forth. Sure, both sides get tension. And before you add another one, um, well, in this case, I'm my pan is only big enough to do one at a time. Um, but I'm I'm not going to add more oil uh, to, for the next one. Um, and I find that I, with the amount that I started with, it's enough to get me through maybe three or four flatbreads. Um, but do whatever seems best with whatever frying pan you're using. Okay. So I'm going to say this is nice and done. So you can see the heating is a little too bright. <laughs> see, it's it's nice and, and golden brown. Uh, it got a little bubbly there. Nice. So I'm just turning my my uh, skillet off, uh, knowing that we're, we're already a little bit over time, and I want to finish with the soup. Um, so if you're working on a, a flatbread, maybe uh, finish the one you're working on right now, and then um, we'll wrap up with the final step of the, the soup. And while, you, while you're doing that, I'm just going to rinse my hands real quick. I'm not browning at all. Well, Lynette, I want to tell you, your little girl is adorable. I didn't <laughs> want to interrupt before. Yeah, she was so sweet. Thank you so much. <laughs> it just turned three. I miss being around little kids. Yeah, they're a handful. <laughs> yeah, but they're fun and... Nah, my mess feet. them afterwards let me tell you you will <laughs> they do but they're, they're my little they're my favorite human beings they just see life as is yes yep my squash still ain't ready to blend not even close how's everyone doing I'm cooking my squash. I gave up to even trying the flatbread. Oh, <laughs> I'm just concentrating on the soup. <laughs> no worries. No, no worries at all. To make the flatbread another day. <laughs> or I, I'm happy to stay on a little bit later too, if, if folks. Oh, that's all right. You've got the recipe here, so yeah, I'll just use that. <laughs> It can't be hard to stick the immersion blender in and blend it. <laughs> it. It's not. So if you have an immersion blender, this is the final step. Um, if you are using a stand uh, blender, um, you can use that too. Just be careful um, scooping out a few cups at a time um, and, and only blending a few cups at a time. And, you know, it, it'll be really hot. So just be careful about that. My blender, my blender approved processor says not to put hot soup in it. So I made curried carrot. Um, oh, what were those peas? Oh, can I can't think of it. Uh, not to blend yet. <laughs> I just use my my potato masher. Oh, um, yeah. That's I, I had a really bad accident trying to do it in my blender, and it took me like three days to clean it off my ceiling and all. <laughs> the stove so oh, no, I no. don't do that anymore and I just use this old-fashioned squisher that's, I, I, that's what I used yesterday I meant to say that too that's, that's perfect yes okay Ca curry carrot lentil soup that's what I made and uh put it in the blender but I had to, I let it cool down before I used the blender I yeah I recommend doing that um all right so I'm going to turn this on it'll be a little loud I did discover by using your curry that I've been wondering my, my um, recipes aren't 
pacing very curried. And yours is a lot stronger than what I have. I think mine must be um, old. <laughs> Time to replace it. chunks here. <laughs> Red's good. <laughs> Great. And that's about the consistency that I that I'd like. Um, I don't mind a few stray chunks of uh, butternut squash in it. Um, but I will move my camera over so you can see the final result. The beautiful golden color from that turmeric. And yeah, and then you can um, finish up your flatbreads, dunk uh, those into the soup. Um, also, the nice thing about this soup is uh, because it's it's a simple one to make, you can make it in, you know, under an hour. Um, it's a good one to also store uh, to make quickly and, and, and store quickly. So you can easily freeze it too. If you've got um, uh, freezer safe Tupperware or, or even a plastic bag. Um, yeah. Any, any questions where folks are right now? Nope. It looks and smells so good. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> thank you for eating like us. <laughs> yes, thank you. Of course, of course. I uh, wonder if I can, can you do this flatbread with whole wheat flour? Yes, yeah, you, you definitely can. You can experiment with different uh, flours. Um, I can't say for certain, but I would imagine that the whole wheat flour might need a little more water. Just okay. because it's a not quite as fine. Uh, yeah. Oh. Um, are there? I'm not munching my flatbreads. They're going to be gone by the time I get around <laughs> to blending my soup. <laughs> <laughs> they are really tasty. <laughs> yeah, they're really good. Um, now, is anyone coming over to do my dishes? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> that, that is the downside of yeah, doing the dishes. Although, as far as like past co uh, cooking classes that we've done, uh, it feels like minimal. No, it's awesome. It's awesome <laughs> to have company in the in the pursuit. Also, yeah. well, we we would love to take um, suggestions uh, of recipes that we could do in in future cooking classes either things that you would love to learn how to make or things that you already know how to make and, and would love to share with others. I would suggest the next time I would have followed my instinct and peeled the squash and had it ready <laughs> before we started. I think that would have been a good, good yeah. tip to put in there. <laughs> sure, yeah, that's, that's a good point. We can definitely with and there's a lot of chopping we can give folks a heads up and and if people want to do a little prep work before the class that yeah. will help put in a note before the video to do it you know pre pre um heal your squash <laughs> how do we go to to watch this so i will once once we're done i will upload it onto youtube um to a link that only only folks that have the link can see it so it's not something that's just completely publicly out there um and so i'll, I'll text you all or email the link to you all tomorrow okay yeah. thank you <laughs> awesome um well feel free to to sign off if you want to keep keep finishing your cooking okay. and eating if 
if it's helpful for me to stay on to answer more questions, I'm happy to do that. Um, he has a question. Yeah, um, I don't I don't have a question. Well, it is a question, I guess. Um, when will you be doing this again? This is really awesome. And now I have dinner and it was like being on like, you know, Julia Child with somebody telling me <laughs> what to do. So it was great. And it's all done and it's in my house, not on the TV. <laughs> Uh, that's perfect. Um, yeah, we will, we'll be doing this once a month. So the next one will be March 1st. Yeah. Okay. So that, that would be the first Tuesday of each month this time. Yeah. Maybe a St. Patrick's Day dinner or <laughs> something like that. Yeah, we could do something. Mm -hmm. Do like an Irish soda bread. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that'd be nice. I've always yeah. wanted to make that. Um, and I see there's a question here of how, how do we join join the class? Um, we'll send out um, emails and texts again when we're ready for to collect signups for the next class. And I imagine that will be in the next uh, probably week and a half to two weeks. We'll, we'll get the word out. Well, I'll be signing up. <laughs> Wonderful. And is there some place we can leave feedback and reviews? Uh, sure. Um, I guess if you want to, uh, you're, you're more than welcome to um, email feedback uh, directly to me. I can put my, my email in there. Um, trying to think. I guess we don't necessarily have a way to leave anonymous feedback at the moment, but we could certainly set that up. Thank you so much for doing this. Yeah. Oops. I, this is I a real gift. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I'm going to log out. I have so much flour I have to make. So I had to go you. check my suit. So I'm going to thank log you for out dinner. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you so much. Bye bye. Thank you, thank you so much. much.